Okay, guys. It's been 27 years. Oh, my God. Bill, you've grown up nicely. Sure. Bev, you did well. Wasn't I supposed to be thin? <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Marsh Parker. I'm Ian Fuego here. Six self burn right there. Oh, so, <laughs> guys, we are here to do our non spoiler review of It Chapter 2. And I am very excited about this discussion. So, just as a bit of a preface, we saw the first movie two years ago, obviously, when it came out. And it, it was honestly a catalyst for growth in our channel, a big a big amount of growth in our channel. Ginormous. <laughs> One of the funniest and biggest things about that first round of It reviews was that the lovely Marsha Parker was not a fan no. at all. Not, not a not fan. Not <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited about this because I want to know what she thought about this one. So Man. we're going to do this review like we normally do them. We're going to talk about our overall thoughts. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the story. We'll talk about the acting. We'll talk about the effects. We'll talk about the music. There is a lot to talk about. This is a two hour and 40 something minute movie, you guys. 49 minutes. 249 minutes. Oof da. So we are 11 minutes like shy it. of three hours. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's a lot to talk about. We'll get into it. We won't talk spoilers. We're going to do a separate spoiler review that Marsha likely won't be able to stay around and attend wow. because it's already so late. Three hour movie sure. on a weeknight. So uh, mm -hmm. let's get into it. And. Let's go with Marsha first. Yeah, I agree. So um, go, I went into this movie with very low expectations. I Lower I didn't even really expect anything of it except for okay, I'm just gonna go in. I'm just gonna just let it happen and see how I really feel about it. And from the very first moment, it was yes. It was. Ex so awesome. It was exactly what I wanted the first one to be. It was balls to the walls, no shame. People were just getting slaughtered and just, you know, Pennywise was not just Pennywise. He was it. He was everything you could have possibly fear all rolled into one. It was just a masterpiece. Everybody did a phenomenal job. And the only thing you could think of, I came out of the movie thinking, they actually did it. They made the second half as awesome as it needed to be. Nobody liked the first half or the second half of the miniseries. Everybody thought it was the weakest half. And that's because they were able to do it justice and they rocked it. They're like, here's my schlong. Oh, <laughs> damn. Wow. Whipping and out the D. And Present everybody was the, all like, the big ah. D. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, that's then an overall that's, impression. That's, that, uh, that is an overall <laughs> thought for sure. Yeah. Um, Fueguissimo, why don't you go next? I love this movie. Okay, yeah, okay. I did, man. I had um, no idea. I sat story, next to Fuego and I still I'm didn't gonna, know what he thought about they it. They changed some things. It's a different turn of the wheel. I and did notice, I, sorry, just real quick. I did notice that you were doing a lot of shifting forward, back. Sh like, you were you were in it. I was completely you engaged were in it. throughout this entire thing. Continue. And they... And they Obviously, it's a different turn of the wheel, and they, they alter some things, but since I've approached these King adaptations with more of that viewpoint, I'm much more okay with, them, you know, these slight alterations, and I, for one, love the adult story. I love that side of the story in the original novel, and actually, I don't mind it at all in the original miniseries, and so I felt the casting was great. I thought, with the exception of one person who was honestly my most excited, ended up turning out the weakest performance, but we'll get to that. Um, I am surprised, but okay, yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And uh, to, but but as, as a whole, visually, I, I mean, performance-wise, they and just seeing some of the beats in the book, like the Bunyan beat that I never thought we would ever see. I mean, it, I. I, I, I'm shocked that I loved it because I approached it with reservation and even a little trepidation with the fact that Kerry Fukunaga was not involved with this. They really leaned very heavily on his script for the one with the kids. This was Gary Doberman who wrote The Nun adapting here. But when the source material is so goddamn good, I mean, it's thankfully probably pretty hard to muck it up. So I'm curious about your thoughts now. <laughs> <clears throat> so I very much enjoyed the movie. I did not love it as much as I did the first movie. <laughs> interesting. That's this is this is why this it's going to be an interesting, interesting review. Interesting. Yeah. I did not expect Fuego to like it as much as he did. To be honest it. with you, I love um, the fact that they I, switched back and forth. Like I liked, uh, yes, I liked, 
I liked the vast majority of the movie. Mm-hmm. I will say that. There were some choices that were made throughout the movie that I questioned, but I will say those could be easily consolidated into the effects category. I agree. So That's fair. I liked yeah. I liked the majority of the movie, um, the story, the acting, how they continued it, how they played off of the first one, how they brought the kids back. I think I know where they had to de-age them. Yes, I saw. There's one scene. One in scene particular, in particular. It's one of the, the earlier. Movie. Yep, one of the I was earlier. Just like, wow. First okay. time we see the clubhouse, mm-hmm. right? Same thing, right? Big time, big time, and the big time. You could see, and it's largely Finn Wolfhard. Mm-hmm. Largely Finn Wolfhard, you could tell they had to well, de-age and, and because he did not look. When you see, yeah. if you watch Stranger Things season kid. three, yeah. you'll see that it's not the same looking kid as in mm-hmm. it chapter one. So they had to do some things, but I think it was only in that scene. Yeah, because they had so many other <clears throat> stocks, like shots and different mm-hmm. bits from the original filming of chapter one, which I guess is when it's going to go down. As but we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So I will say though, I will say my overall impression is I really enjoyed the movie, but it didn't sing to me like the first one did. Interesting. Mm, yeah, oh. I felt a little bit more so. I okay. thought this was I think so I'd like this much one better. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm excited. Let's oh. get into it, let's get into it. Yeah. Um, Foyissimo, why don't you hit the uh, the story then? I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with the original miniseries or the book or whatever, but if for whatever reason you are uninitiated and not. So, yeah, we are catching up with the adults 27 years later. Mike Hanlon is the only one who remained in Derry, so he is the catalyst for all of us. He's the one who reaches out to the rest of the Losers Club, and it's like, hey, this cycle is starting anew. Adrian Mellon, this, uh, you know, like, gave, and that was a scene that oh, was so man, was well so done, girl, and it made me it, it, so happy to see that on screen, even okay. though it's a horrible scene as far as just hate crime. Was and that all dynamic the same from the book? Yes. Okay. That, like, they, like, that was ripped was, right from the pages and yeah. done so, so well with him putting the hat on and everything. Mm-hmm. And, really? Yes. Wow, that, yeah, okay. It, and, and no just, wonder he got... See, that, I think that was the cornerstone of why Marcia didn't like the first one, because it didn't follow the book as closely as she wanted. But this one appears to have followed the book much closer. Like, that definitely opens, except that, that for definitely one opens part, up the book. Yeah. Right? Which yeah. I think there was some stuff... I don't remember you ever mentioning a container or that's anything not, like that. Okay, so we'll, book, we'll... Okay. Yeah. So we got to be careful, but I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm but they did. very intrigued that you guys liked yeah. it as much as you did, considering that's a huge... Change. They still retrofitted the one aspect mm-hmm. of him kind of tripping with the Indians. It's it's just in, in the book. It's Richie it's and Mike, you know. And but it's earlier on. Yeah, yeah, earlier on. Anyway, I like that scene. And yeah, well, it was cool. And, and well, anyway. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> so so Mike reaches out to the grown up losers and. Uh, yeah, so uh, but the, despite the nasty reactions some of them get, most notably Richie seems to have the worst with the vomiting and all that other stuff, just getting the call from, he's like, Mike, Mike who? You know, he's about to go on stage and, you know, everybody else, it's still an adverse reaction, but nowhere near as bad as Richie's. He seems to be the one, aside from Stanley, if you've seen the original, you know what his, his reaction is without spoiling stuff. But, yeah, so... Uh, they actually they, tied that up a bit nicer in this than I thought they did in the original miniseries, for sure. To degree. Oh, see, look at the two book readers. That that was the two of, book uh, readers are like, yeah. Exactly. They that did was, give us, I liked they it. They did give us the one know, scene. It yeah. just we got wasn't... more closure than we did in the miniseries. I will say that. But let's leave it at that. Go yeah, ahead. Continue. Yeah, that's, that's spoiler Continue. review We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Because that was some of my few few reservations, actually. Okay, we'll get there. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, the, the adult versions of all of these kids that, uh, the, you know, the world fell in love with as the highest gross in horror film of all time, all time. Two, two years ago, uh, yeah, they uh, they return as their 27 years age counterparts, and they're trying to remember because so much has been repressed, so much has been lost, and really, it's them collectively just getting reacquainted and then just splintering off and trying to figure out the rest of it separately, and then they reconvene to go and try to vanquish evil permanently, and that's really, I mean, you can simplify it just like that's that. That's the there's length really, of it, yeah. There's really not, not much else, you know, beyond just great character interaction. I love the way everybody was written in this. I ended up loving the adult Eddie so much more than I was expecting to. That dude from, uh, what, Sinister? He was great He in did a this. great job. He was terrific, dude. And, like, even young Eddie was so much more endearing in the previous film than I even felt him to be in the original, like, book and miniseries. Mm-hmm. Like, he was, a, like, it's why he went on to be terrific in Shazam. And I almost that came... That kid's gonna uh, yeah, be a that, terrific actor, mm-hmm. man. 
Yeah. There, there was a lot of good stuff in this movie that I wasn't anticipating being as good as it was. There's a lot of bad there was CGI, even there was even some so. emotional moments where yeah. I almost like rolled a tear where Same. I was like, yeah. damn, I'm way more invested in this than I thought I was gonna yeah. be. That and and there was surprises. And mm-hmm. everyone's been proclaiming Hater as being you know the one who steals the show, but I I will contend. The dude who played Eddie, he wowed me so much more than the I dude who played him. Eddie. But well, was, Bill Hader did do Bill it. Bill Hader was amazing. I think he might have he stolen the show for me. He honestly, he totally stole that show. Like yeah. it's okay, I see where you're coming from yeah. with Eddie, but at the same time, no. There was no. even one scene again that's supposed to be largely a catharsis, mm-hmm. but he's given the spotlight. And then everyone sort of rallies, and it's like, I loved that. You know, as we talk about this, I think I'm going to like it more and more. Because mm-hmm. that scene just sat with me for mm-hmm. a couple of minutes in the movie. And now that I'm thinking about it again, that was like the all encompassing, like, that's like what I wish I had with my core group of friends. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it's really weird. Mm-hmm. A lot say? of this really. Yeah, you're not part of it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, you would be. You would be. But there's a couple of missing people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I love well, that aspect like of them. it. I was Stanley's so, there, you know, and so. that's one of the things I do have to say. I was so emotionally invested after the first movie. Mm-hmm. Luckily, they carried through on everyone. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone really got short shrift in this. And like, I think even Mike got uh, got times to shine in yeah. this that he, he didn't get in the much first more one. so than in the yeah. previous yeah. one where they gave him the back seat and he was not the historian that he is in this film. Yeah, he took they, back over that yeah. role again because he's the only one. That I stayed. feel like they probably they almost got retrofitted so much. That. Yeah, yeah. Almost, yeah. Almost, yeah. I, I feel like they got so much heat, and at least I don't know they got heat from me. I don't know about anybody else, but well, especially being they got a lot of heat for changing and, those yeah. changing those roles because it's just such a huge part of the second chapter. And then so they kind of they course they, corrected. They course corrected they and did. they did and I'm, Rightfully I'm grateful so. <laughs> for that because Same. it helped me enjoy the He the did story not way look more. like the the old spice guy in this. He looked no, like Mike he Hanlon. He did. Yeah. I will say he did they did such a good job of chameleonizing themselves into these roles. Mm-hmm. Jessica Chastain is more Beverly than I've ever seen her in any other role ever. Oh, like yeah. I know she was great in the Hurt Locker. I know she's been great in a million things, but she was so Beverly that it's crazy to me. She's and so what I loved was that they actually did pay numerous homages to the 90s movie. Yeah. And, and a couple of lines, I don't know if Kiss Me Fat Boy was in the original book, but like that was something that That's was in the original it. movie. Yeah. And so there were a couple of homages mm-hmm. like Kiss that me. that I loved, you know? Yeah, exactly. And when that happened, I was like, yes! You know, like, it was... It was this was and they had nuts, this was the book Stephen service, King stuff too, but yeah, I mean, well, this was yeah. fan service. This was book service specifically. Yeah, one scene huge like, Stephen King fan service. When I heard a voice, I was like, "No way!" And Fuego even did the same thing. He was like, "No, like he because we didn't get a reveal, <laughs> and, but we and heard you the saw voice." Me, I just kind of you did. Like you that. lean forward. And you're like, mm. <laughs> "So we can't talk about it here." That's very spoilerific, but it was yeah. such a beautiful moment. And, and, and also, there were actually both, a number of moments. There's, there, there's one right. line where you and I both, finally, they actually said yep, it after yep. not saying it once, once in, the in the original movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yep, exactly. Beep, so, beep. yeah, exactly. They, they said it in the original. Oh, yeah. no, well, Pennywise did, but none of the kids did. None of the kids said it to each other. Yeah, right. Which we so, we were yeah, like, they, I right? feel like there was some course correcting going on, but you were so very that. concerned about Gary Doberman taking was, over really after was. watching The Nun with legitimate reason. And he's but he, a few he other did things. He did a good job, I'm man. I'm super impressed. And I'm actually looking forward to watching this later because I just recently watched a YouTube video where they're like, look at all the times Pennywise was hidden in the background of the mm-hmm. first movie. And there's so many times that he appears, and even th- when they're all collected in that alleyway, I he's did, not on the wall, and then later yeah. in the scene, he does appear on the wall watching them. I did feel like... Like, in the graffiti art. Yeah. You, so I was looking for things like that in this. Man, I just... I I had so much enjoyment in this mm-hmm. Like, again, I think I'm going to like it more and more as I talk about it. Because sure. at the time, I was just like, I'm kind of bummed that that's it. You know, like, I'm like, I really, and I know there's thoughts out there. Machete says he 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 wants wants to do more. Like, the ultimate cut, like what they did with Watchmen, where he, like, just re, like, positions everything and does it, like, novel specific. Do the full kill bill of it all, right? I would love that. of the entire thing. I would love that. But nonetheless. I think that would be cool. Well, we're, 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 we're we're way off of our our usual format. So, let's talk about the acting, Mm -hmm. right? Let's refocus. Let's talk about the acting. I don't think there was a single person 
that fell short. I, I if you disagree, fine. But There's I love that they just... were actually returning people from the first movie I didn't anticipate returning. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of them. Mm. And, I, and I was happy to see them, and it helped uh, re-immerse me into the world, but... Minor characters, I was Minor saying, characters, yeah, the right. side characters. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, the, 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 I'll talk about yeah, it in spoilers. Yeah. Spoiler review. I, I really dug the acting in this movie. I don't think mm -hmm. anyone fell short. I think everyone stepped up their game, and that was the nice thing. Some of the adults in the original miniseries really left me wanting, but this one, I liked every single person that I was seeing. I liked dude from Night Court in the original who played Richie. I thought he was solid, and I didn't mind the guy who played Big Bill. But um, but everyone know. else was kind of hit or miss. Yeah, honestly, I, I really like liked everyone. I like Ben. I know, you know but we're not talking about company that. Home. Anyway, Marsha, your thoughts on the acting? I thought everybody did a fantastic job. I mean, like, I agree with you. There were some of the minor characters that really kind of kept... They didn't do a good job in the first movie establishing their role and and the pieces that they needed so they were to very play. clearer this time yeah but then like then when they kind of reappeared i'm not gonna spoil anything they weren't very strong as strong as i feel like they could have been and that was a little bit of a downer uh but like, this is a massive mu movie and there was a lot of stuff being thrown at you and i had to let something go and that's one of the things i had see to i liked go. those that's the that's the funny thing i like those moments which ones uh, Those so characters in the first one, yeah. Right. Yeah. The yeah. There, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think it's it fair. Been it's as, fair. As strong but you it. didn't like the first one. And no. I did like the first one, so I liked those yeah, reappearances. I, I don't think that too. they did a good enough job explaining their role and what they were, so it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I'm glad that they did touch on it because it was a catalyst for some things, but they didn't do a lot of the follow through. And I think Jaime might understand what I'm going with that. I well, see, like, I, I feel, I feel they agree. actually went out of their way to explain a couple of things better than they did in the first one. No, they, they did, they did. On, on some but aspects, but I just, there's a few things that I just didn't think hmm. they, and, and, and we're talking about the acting, and I think those sure. characters were not because they okay. weren't as strong and they didn't have a lot of story and there was, it was more cameo it status was, it was anyway. more like we gotta throw this in because it was part of the story but, but we're not gonna we're not gonna stay too heavy on it i'm i'm easy putty when it comes mm. to that stuff <laughs> i am i'm so i'm so sequel centric that mm. if they bring back people from the first in like any capacity whether it's wearing the exact same thing that they were in the original movie or whether it's aging them 27 years but still mm. doing the same thing they were doing back then i dug the hell out of it because of the continuity of it all so yeah no i'm just, i jumped in with a spoiler i had to cut it but ah. Fuego, <laughs> do you have a, a continuation on the acting there i i definitely do because of the fact that so about what like two years ago almost at this particular point i did a most wanted casting for the sequel for the adults james mcavoy was my most wanted for big bill you got he it. was the one who... I knew you were going to say this. He was good, but he really did not impress me very much in this like movie. Him. And as much as I love him as an actor, I was just so much more blown away by, you know, Hader and the actor from Sinister who played Eddie that I I was a little disappointed with his performance. You got outclassed? Do you feel like you got outclassed? I totally do, actually. Okay. I will mm -hmm. definitely contend that I felt that he did. And that, uh, I mean, even... I, I mean, boy, I've never seen the dude who played Grown Up Ben, and he's a handsome dude, and he actually looks oh, a that, lot oh, like yeah, a grown up, nice. grown up, slim down version of that other kid. I, and I thought he had great chemistry with Chastain. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, the only one that I was a little disappointed by because I thought he was just gonna bring it, bring it, bring it. I liked the scenes with the skateboard kid. You know, that's from the book. You know, I thought that was good. The, the, the what happens with the skateboard kid is not in the book, but um, and that was an added scene. Uh, yeah. So as a whole, if there was. If I was going to say there was a missing link in The Losers, I, I, I would say that I didn't feel like, especially after seeing Split and seeing you know Glass and just so many amazing performances from him in the past, I felt like it wasn't as inspired, well, at least personally. And, and I get you know? what you're saying, and um, I want to just add, like I feel like the reimagined version of of it really actually was a disservice to the Bill character because he wasn't that strong in the first movie either. I didn't either. think so either. Yeah. And this strong it wasn't, and it's all about the writing and the presentation. And I feel like they were focusing more on the other characters than it's they did about Big Finn Bill. Oh, no, and I Bill. Thought, it's I all thought about Bill Finn got. I think, no, I think well, I think Bill got his time to shine. No, there was, he, he did. Yeah, and I there think, was. And there I, was a scene all. Well, let yes. me let me finish. I thought like early on. Let her finish. Let her. Sorry, sorry. So, but what I wanted to say was. 
as a group in a hole, he kind of, whenever they were with everybody, he kind of slunk back because he was it was more about everyone else and not as much about Bill. But when he was by himself and he had that's those true. moments, yeah. he really brought it and carried it because that's what that's what he does. He just didn't have much to say at the Chinese dinner scene, you know. They it was really mostly the rest of them. They really him, I yeah. feel like. They didn't but you guys are be... comparing the book. You're not judging by the no, movie No, I'm talking itself. about the, the writer. I'm series, just saying, too, I mean. I'm not, yeah, I'm just saying, like. They did, ch- I don't know, was he, is he a writer Mike in the book? Is- yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He's is he movies. meant to be Stephen King in the book? Because that of, was kind of the like running a, joke. He's this. like kind of the, the just I don't know what's the, it like was. The, it was like one of those things so where like yeah. yeah, he was a successful writer, but it was, things weren't going very well. Although also was the running the joke original... from the book though the running no, joke? No, that's okay. not in there. That's okay. obviously that's obviously that was a reference. And very much so to the yeah. yeah we'll but it's so funny when you consider everything. Although there's two subplots with two characters, both of the spouses. Okay. Yeah. They completely omitted that from this. Well, and, no, and, they they touched on one briefly, but they didn't so follow briefly, up on it. But, yeah. but they're not a part of the finale like Correct. they no. are Correct. in this. Correct. No, well, and, just, and it's just one of those things that you know you have to let some things go, and that and that wasn't. Like, I didn't miss it though. I That's what I was gonna I, say. What I didn't did you miss it either? Yeah. yeah. I, like, I love that you walked out of this loving this movie. I I did too. Does it does, to be it, does it improve the first at all? No. Wow, Jesus, okay, all right. So no. bold with hey, the declaration. ask the answer, ask the answer. No, Fair I enough. mean, it's just... Fair enough. I felt yeah. like this one There was no hesitation more... either. No, not at no. all. No. no, I still hate it. No, I still hate it. <laughs> because it was Such so... Such a bummer. It was so empty compared to this Who movie. wants to watch it? I'll watch part two. I'll watch part two because it's, it's brutal and it's interesting and, it, like, I got See, the pen away that wanted to I feel enough, like it was a ways, little less think, brutal. Than the first mm. one, I think in some aspects it was more brutal. I felt mm. like in some aspects there was less was of a Pennywise emphasis. And it, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's I why I liked that. it. Yeah. And and, and it, because it was more about not as like the clown. It was more about it. It was more about them the coming together. The versions of it too, right? And, stuff, yeah. and it was them coming together to battle. Which and, you really get as the adults specifically yeah. with the different manifestations that torment them and, when they. Split and you got back yeah. to the yeah. characters. I like that too. Yeah, back to the characters and not just like. Hi, look at me. I'm it, and just I'm gonna dance and clown. Ah! No, like no, that's not scary. It's stupid. This is like I, I think they struck that balance. I think they struck uh, that balance really well in the first movie too. I yeah, don't know how you disagree I, on that. I, I felt like Skarsgård had more screen time in the previous one. Though. I yeah. agree. He I agree. Every did. time he was actually left to talk for a moment, I'm like, good, yeah. because I feel like we haven't had enough of this in this movie. Um, so I agree with you. Um, well, I guess that's more so. In, even in the source material and the original miniseries, he appears as a clown more than he does when they come back as adults. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> but I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was great. Like you said, it was a lot more balanced in this movie than it was in the in the first one. And I felt like it was closer to the book, which is probably why I enjoyed it a lot. More. So we we talked about the story and the acting. Let's talk about the. Uh, do you want to talk about the sound real quick? Let's talk about the sound and the and maybe music because the effects we are the effects. where we'll also I effects. have my most like, right. We'll get to that. Most of my gripes are with so the sound, sound design was great. Mm-hmm. I think the sound design was was it didn't leave anything to be desired in the first movie, and that continued in this movie. And I think the score was appropriate. Mm-hmm. They leaned a little bit more heavily on the kids going, la, la, you know, like it almost felt a little child's play-ish score-wise. Mm-hmm. But I will also say that I listened to the It 2017 score and that that opening with the credits and the Warner Bros, mm-hmm. it's the same kids singing. So it's the, uh, you know, it's the, la, you know, it's the, it's that tone and they repeated it in this mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, they're, they're like, settle in. It's going to be more yeah. of what you love. And, and I really feel like it was. So sound design wise, it was great. There was the appropriate crunches. There was the appropriate, oh, what's going on around me? Music wise, I feel like it, it, it you know, it nothing, nothing there. really to write home it about. So yeah. what, do you, what do you guys think about sound? one musical choice that was really weird, and it's where Eddie's getting barfed on, and they shifted. That to was the, I was like, I was like, what's going on here? Yeah, and it was really was brief. It weird. was like 15 seconds, and then it just shifted right back, and I was like, is that supposed to be funny? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I agree yeah. with you on that. Yeah. I agree that I kind of liked it, though, because <laughs> <laughs> it was Fair. like, because he was kind of having a moment. That it he offered was like, a break. He was it having a, he was break. having a moment and he felt a glimpse of success and then it got ripped away from him and I thought that was kind of funny. That's I right. can't say there was anything like in the previous film where they used comedically new kids 
or uh, with the rock fight with Anthrax. There was nothing but they quite did, oh, like that wise, that just yeah. really stuck out mm -hmm. as far as choice of popular music at least. Yeah. But, but there were a lot of good throwbacks in the film, mm -hmm. especially the not scary at all, scary, very oh, scary. Because yeah. yeah. that's a throwback to the original. and Not what, music related or sound what, related. No, not, <laughs> and I just want to go back real quick though, but that throwback was really funny. It was so good. And the ultimate... Ending not, of it, not, I was like, scary, oh, not, oh. not scary at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that good. bit was so loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And so, it just goes back to like the core relationship we between have those two. I love and, those agreed. two. And that agreed. is yeah. what I really enjoyed about the story. It was the heart. It was the heart. And I feel like I got that heart back because I did not get it in that first one. I sure. thought the relationship was way too forced and let, not as organic in the first one as it was in the second one, which is so funny because, you know, there's something years. really endearing. They didn't remember everybody when they came back. So, there's anyway. something legitimately endearing to still being friends with somebody you've known since you were kids. Yeah. yeah. When you're an adult. And so, I mean, a few of us hopefully still done. I mean, I know you and Dave, obviously. Yeah, I've Dave got, and I obviously. I've got a couple friends different. that I've known since kindergarten that I still see, like, at least a few times a year, you know, with still here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And so, that I don't know, there's just something to seeing that sort of just kinship. It's fun to watch. It's, 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 it's just really fun to watch. It's really endearing, man. It is, Not, you know? hey, and F you, man. You need <laughs> like, a, oh, yeah, your mom. You need a I, like, I kind of do. Yeah. Where they so, so close let's by. let's let's wrap this up talking about the effects yeah. because I yeah. think this is the biggest point we need to talk about. Yeah. So a lot of CGI. Here's the thing: there was a ton of CGI in this. Tons. Even compared to the first movie, it felt like a lot to me. Same. Mm -hmm. Also, My I will also problem. say that there were some scares that were initially presented in the first movie that are repeated in this movie, but with a lot more light, mm. and I mean, thus it's less scary. Not as convincing. Right. Yeah. Not as convincing. A little more digital tongue to make up the difference that just didn't make up the difference. You know what I mean? I must One admit. thing in particular. But, I'll, I'll give you your turn. Just yeah. let, me, let me hear me out. Um, Effects-wise... I did really like it, but the CG, if you guys didn't like the CG in the first movie, you're going to really not like the CG in this movie, because it felt even more pronounced. They had to do most of the things were done in CG, and it's not bad CG, it's still good CG, but it's still apparently CG. It takes you out a little bit. It does take you out a little bit. However, it's accomplished CG, and when that's the focus of it, they really do make it scary in its own way mm -hmm. and that kind of leads to the stuff we can't talk about which is the ending you know a lot of people are very curious how it ends we can't go into it but it is a very effects heavy third act i will say it yeah. is so i think that's where i'll leave my i, I enjoyed really most of the effects too. i, love the I enjoyed design. most of the cg i love the set design yeah. but yeah as far as the effects go mm -hmm. it did feel more cg than the first movie did Oh, absolutely. And you want to know why? It was because they were actually doing things in this movie. Okay. <laughs> and, Ouch. you know, sorry, but, you know, I, it, oh, it's going to have CG. You can't do those things. And that was the problem, the downfall with the miniseries is, is that they couldn't do the things that they needed to do because the technology wasn't there. And, yeah, it could have been better, sure. It was 1990. But, <laughs> no, I mean, even in this one, no. they, I mean, sure, you could do better and it, maybe not as much, but then at the same time, I'm like, I have been imagining these things while I'm reading it, and now I can see them come to life, and, and I, I, maybe it won't last decades, but it definitely has left a major impression on me, and I got excited to be able to see certain things that I just was really hoping to be able to see. And just watching it come to life was great. And like when you're saying the opening credits, I knew from the moment the opening happened, I was gonna like this movie. <laughs> because it was that much more like dramatic and change and tone and it just felt dark and dirty just the way this book is. So I'm just, I don't know. I was excited. The CG, yes, there was a lot. And yes, there's times it did pull me out, but at the same time I was like, no, don't pull me out a minute. Like, <laughs> you fight like, against it. Yeah. No, yeah. no, give I'm me more. I'm trying to suspend my disbelief. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, yeah. that's, that's my opinion. What do you got? So, it's a counterbalance of quality of CG and maybe just the type of scene where it was utilized a little bit more effectively. Like, I love the Paul Bunyan. You see it in the trailer, so you know that that comes out. I thought that was terrific, even though it's very obviously CGI. 
but yet I thought the the Chinese dinner scene looked like really bad CGI. Oh. I did not, some parts I did, of it. Some of it, just not. I mean, I'm since so since I still remember the movie. eyeball and the original fortune cookie and everything, and that was all practical and like the weird little baby chicken and stuff. I don't know. I mean, some of it was done very well. It, it's just. I don't know. I guess it was really with pertinence to to the lighting. Probably did have a lot to do with it mm-hmm. in some of those specified scenes. And yet the Paul Bunyan was one of the most brightly lit scenes. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just totally full of it. But uh, the the de aging, as we touched upon earlier, was also very apparent in one scene early mm-hmm. on, particularly. Most of the rest, though, I honestly felt like were just you know old yeah. footage from the 2017 films. They, they did didn't really have to that, mess yeah. with that. Yeah, it was very seamlessly done. And Muchetti still says that there's a lot of scenes that he filmed with both 2017 and with this one that aren't in either cut and hence ultimate cut super cut whatever the hell coming at some particular point but it's it's a beautiful looking film i love especially the just set design as i was mm. mentioning a moment Nibble ago street was amazing Nibble Nibble street street was great, great. I and feel, the I layer feel like the layer was yeah. great too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the fact that, you know, they, they had the weird little carving on the front like you see in the book, which was dope. And, you know, they go into the sub, like, like deeper subterranean crazy area. And I love the fact that they, you know, said, yeah, millions of years that they at least, you know, mm-hmm. like they took that into consideration. So I don't know, man. I, I just, uh, maybe a little more Pennywise would have been good. You know, just more of a, a practical, actual thing. But right. otherwise, I, I thought everything else was predominantly effective. Well, I think that's uh, pretty much as much as we can say without spoiling anything, you guys. That's going to lead us to our spoiler review, which, thank you, Marsha, for joining us for our non-spoiler review. Yeah. I'm really glad you enjoyed it, honestly. No, so it would have been a bummer if you didn't like both of them. Like, yeah. then you could have just written it all off. But then now, I'd be like, I'm sorry, guys, I can't be part of this review. Yeah, but I figured I that would be, be the case. I would be shunned. I figured that would be the I'd case. I'd be shunned but. from all humanity, from the show. <laughs> you no, know, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Our Patreons would remember. I'm glad Fuego loved it, too. This like, one is structured surprising. a lot more like the book, mm-hmm. I think. I think and that's why I yeah, yeah, I I think I prefer this to, to part one. That's really funny. Yeah. So I definitely prefer part one. I don't love but it. But this was still good. And I will say that without spoiling it, yeah. they changed the end from at least they the did. 90s book, uh, a movie. Well, from the book, too? Well, from, well from yeah. The, the, yeah, there's something very specific. So they changed very things different. to try and make it better, and that's actually I a bit of a running so, gag. So what are your what endings? Endings, yeah, how endings, endings is the running so gag. Without spoiling the, spoiling the ending, were you satisfied with the yes. ending? Yes. Well... I, it didn't give me that same bittersweet feeling. I was more movie. satisfied than the 90s movie. Yeah. Mm. But I feel like I could have been even more satisfied if they had done a bit of extra writing work. Mm. I still prefer the end of the book. The end of the book, it's about fading memory without getting into okay. into specifics and the, and the bittersweet aspect of that. Mm-hmm. And they changed that. Okay. So, yeah, I thought that the ending was different enough from the book, but there was one aspect that I was really sad that we couldn't have it. You know, that's okay. I still enjoyed it overall. I think it was better than the 90s version because you did get a little bit more to chew on. And, you know, I, I want to say, like, over my more my last, yeah. uh, the last thing I want to say on. is that this movie does make me want to rewatch the first one. <laughs> Marsha will like the super cut. Trust us, guys. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll just wait for that. Yeah, so. so it's all woven together. Yeah, but I way. mean, I would definitely rewatch this movie. Awesome. Hell yeah. Fuegissimo, final thoughts? <sighs> final thoughts. Um, I, I had some qualms with one specific alteration about the ending, but for them, I mean, honestly, I, I walked out of this with a smile on my face. I was smiling through so many different specific beats, seeing stuff that we had never seen from this mm-hmm. story represented on screen before, and a few of the changes I actually thought were for the better, mm-hmm. you know, but they're just minor alterations. So. Ultimately, I'm very, very glad to have this two-part movie series. I loved the first one. I really enjoyed the second one. But when I add them together, it's still going to be one of the favorite things that I could go to. It is definitely something that I would show my future generations if I produced Chilins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Little Chilins. Chilins. Um, so yeah, I, we can I, definitely show them this version versus the 90s oh, version. Oh, comparatively speaking, yes. <laughs> well, and I still maintain <laughs> that Scar... Well, I mean, no, listen. This is battery acid, you slime. I still say... But 
But he got his moment where he's like, I, you know, the I believe kind of moment. Mm-hmm. I liked that a lot. That's I was hearing in my head, this is battery acid, you slime. So honestly, maybe you need to watch all of them. I to really the, have the ultimate all the appreciation. Of really. It's such a great story. There's, there's, there's things you could pick and choose from each that are all great. Um, but I still will say, after two parts of this, I will say that Bill Skarsgård is my Pennywise mm-hmm. over Tim Curry. Tim Curry is not bad, but I will take Bill Skarsgård over Tim Curry's Pennywise any day of the week. Good mm-hmm. for you and Bill. Yeah, I it's know. It's a different turn of the wheel. Tim, it's a different Tim turn Curry of the wheel. Is, you know, I, I mean, love whatever. Tim Curry. I feel, I feel like if Tim Curry was given the chance to, to make this movie when he was at his top, when he made the first one, I think it would just, you would feel But different. that's not what happened. Unless slapsticky and that's more, not what happened, more imposing. You know? But I thought, I thought, not what happened, I mean, I don't want to get back into this debate again, but Tim Curry <laughs> was I'm determined to make the audience hate you. Uh, cut it <laughs> out. Because he was approachable okay, cool, yeah. and then could get <laughs> terrifying, and that's what it's about. Fair enough, guys. Cool. Let's just leave it at that. The hill cut that's Let's a lot not point out how I, how Marsha just has the t- the worst opinions on this series uh-huh. as, as a whole. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. After all my disappointment with Pet Cemetery, this made me really happy. This I am. Really you know what was happy. really funny about this screening was the one guy in the audience when Doctor Sleep's trailer went like. No, they did, they did a shining thing. Like, oh, yeah. like oh, this yeah, guy, that this guy, was the one guy, that guy that was like, and everybody's like, yeah. there's a shining sequel, and the rest like, of us no, in the theater are like, yeah, like, bitch, yeah, what are you talking on, about? Man. Yeah, yeah. Book came where out the like hell are you? Years ago, yeah. six years. Nonetheless, ago. Ben, bro. nonetheless, <laughs> we enjoyed it. Chapter two. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, click that like button and subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss future reviews going forward. Yeah. Fuego and I are going to stick around, talk all about spoilers. Thank you for joining, Marsha. Marsha's um, the best. So stick around and, and watch that if you've seen the movie. Otherwise, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you to all of our patrons for all of their contributions and movie choices. You guys, if you want to become a patron, you can actually choose things for us to do for the I channel. No ching but that's enough of that. Until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. I'm Marsh Parker. Gracias. I'm going to have you in Fuego. And remember... Stay scared!